Seriously, you gotta be kidding me. So I came out here about an hour ago, turned up the temperature in the garage, so I came out here to be at temperature. And this is what I hate about programmable thermostats. Sometimes I wish you just find an old school mercury switch one where you just leave it at that temperature and it'll stay there. Everything's fucking programmable. I mean, I could turn it up, but when I'm not in the garage, I don't want to be heating it, so it's kind of like my own fault, but I don't know what fucking time these change. But, the first part of this video is being filmed pre-Cuba, so I'm gonna go back and attach all that I took apart and I was trying to figure out what was going on, and I figured out what was going on. And we'll get to that in a minute. The gray plug carries your CAN bus, and that's one that communicates um, with the OBD scanner, uh, make sure the dash works properly and everything else. What was happening, as you guys saw in the previous video when I was working on it, is that the key ignition would stay on, the odometer worked, but the gauges would not work. Something was not right, no communication with the scanner. What happens is this is your main plug right here, the black one. There's two powers and a ground. I had power to the one, but I didn't have power to the other one. This is this blue and white wire right here. So whatever happened, whatever circuit this belonged to, I believe it went down to the transmission and that's where it got killed. But this one here is the one I need to connect to another power source. So once I connected it to the positive post on the battery and did a test, everything worked perfectly. The dash lit up, the voltage gauge worked, everything else. Now, however, due to the fact that um, this video is filmed pre-Cuba, I'm leaving in three days, but I want to come and finish up this before I leave. And of course, it's about a two month buffer. I do not know what kind of comments you guys had, but uh, I'll be sure to answer them in the last video. But now, only thing I want to do today in this video before I leave is uh, just get this all tidied up get the garage cleaned up because the next part I'm going to work on is probably fit that radiator up. Once the radiator's fitted up, start looking at getting some radiator hoses and shit and uh, working on the air system. I'm probably going to buy a DIY builder exhaust kit just out of steel and build something up and just keep plugging away. So we need to verify pin number 32 is indeed grounded. And I'm grounded. Pin 22 should be 12 volt. Close enough. What we want to check out is pin number two. Pin number two is showing me no voltage. That is an issue right there. So now I got a jumpered. Pin number two has power. Should be able to turn this on and everything will work. Sentry key's gone off. Staying off, which is good. I'm reading volts now, which I couldn't before. So now that's hooked up. See, we're communicating now. It's giving me all sorts of issues because everything's gutted out. So I need to find a 12 volt source ignition on that I can connect that to. So I got this dead plug with all those connectors. So I'm just going to start hooking up to one at a time with the power probe, it's my favorite tool, and see which one has 12 volts ignition on. I could just go onto my wiring schematic and look up what these wires are and then, but that'd be too easy. That would be too easy. What does this one tell us? Right now, nothing. If I turn the key on and it beeps, 12 volt on power. Nope, nothing off that wire. I went through all these wires and only one has 12 volts, but it's constant. I need ignition on. So 
So it's really useless to me. Really useless. So there's no no point having this plug in there. I'm just gonna jet it out, leave it out here, and it's purple and white. You hear the buzz? 12 volts, splicer in. Get a length of this blue and white wire off this transmission harness. This is what I'm calling the mystery wire. If something ever happens in that fuse blue, I don't know what it's connected to. Just letting the soldering iron heat up. TS100. This thing kicks ass. Once you get 350 degrees, like it says, bingo. I just got a couple. Don't forget the heat shrink. Everything's taped back up. That's for the ignition. Let's try this one last time. Everything works. All right. Everything's powered up. Now if I turn the key, the power probe should beep. Yes. We're good. Well, that's it. I'm glad that's all sorted out, taken care of. All that being said, I can finally head to Cuba, relax for a week, kick back, not even worry about what that issue was. I'm glad I got it solved. Anyways, in the next clip, hopefully I'll have a tan. Oh, I just got back from Cuba, and now this humidor is now full. I have a couple of friends that are still down there. I told them if they can pick me up another box of the Romeo Julieta. I'll make it worth the while for them. But uh, yeah, very nice. Some dumb cats. No you snoring? Are you giddy snoring, Dom Gats? Dom Gats? Were you snoring, Dom Gats? All you like to do is just cuddle. That's all you want to do. In my next life, I want to be a cat, Mr. Dom Gats. You have the best life. You do. Do you want some chin scritches? Do you? Do you like the chin scritches? There you go. I know. You live the best life. I don't know what to tell you after being in Cuba for a week. Sure don't look very tanned. Weather wasn't that nice either. I mean, first real day was Saturday. It was nice then. Then we had like three days of rain. And then the rest of it was, I don't know, it was okay. But coming back, I had a holy shit moment i'm gonna tell you about that in just a second so in this video i'm going to focus on working on a little bit more of the wiring tiring or should I say tying some things up um getting ready to uh do the final assembly here so this is my holy shit moment i uh when we left cuba i had got into the uh, vip air canada lounge so i don't have to sit with everybody else down there and of course you get priority boarding but uh we had two two flights to make one was from hoging to toronto and then from toronto to calgary which our second flight we had uh just barely an hour to make our connecting flight and the airport in toronto is not very friendly to navigate through especially since we had to like walk through a bunch of corridors and jump on a bus and the bus drove us around and we had to go through customs but anyways what happened is that one too many buttons on down on my shirt what happened was that um when the plane landed in toronto 
I got up out of my seat, started walking down the aisle on the plane, and I put my hand behind my back pocket, like, holy fuck, my wallet's not there. Where the fuck is my wallet? Because my passport was in my side pocket, phone was on, I didn't have my wallet, and I start to fucking panic, eh? So I started walking back down towards the aisle, and luckily, my wallet was in my fucking seat, but, you know, what would have happened, right? If my wallet would have fell out when I was in Hogan, Cuba, would never seen it again. What if I would have left the plane, Start to go through customs and realize I didn't have my wallet because my credit card was in there. My vehicle was in the park and fly. How would I pay for my vehicle? I'm telling you right now, fucking when you're traveling and I almost could have had a not so good situation is that make sure your wallet and personal belongings are always on you before you move to another destination. That was a life lesson for me. So now let's get to work on this. When I was gone, I got a letter in the mail. It's gonna be some more stickers for my hood here. Let's find out. So it's a Bugs Life has a YouTube channel. You can go check her out. She's got XJ that her and her hubby have been working on. This is the letter she sent. She said, hey Jerry, thank you so much for all of your support on my channel. And I really enjoy watching your videos. YouTube has really encouraged us to learn new things, whether exploring new trails, Trying harder obstacles are learning to weld. Catching everything on camera is fun, and sharing it with the world is crazy. LOL. Wishing you continued success with YouTube and your gold. Best bug. So I need to find where should I put her sticker. I want to thank you, Buck, for sending me a sticker. There you are on my hood. Lots more real estate left for whoever wants to send me a sticker to put on there. Now... I need to find out where I put that emulator right here. Other things I'm gonna need should be right in this box. This is what I'm looking for. These connectors. So if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know my mind jumps around all the time. And I just ran into a situation here where I was working on a reroute for my power steering line here because i didn't like it coming underneath i'm also going to get rid of the power steering cooler as well since i swapped over to the ls but um the issue that i'm having and this is only stuff that i've heard in urban legends but it's happened to me when i removed i have to get this 90 cut off because I don't know if you guys can see in there, but the uh, the threads on the 90 have all galled. And I couldn't figure out why, because I just left it loose on the fitting, but uh, when I pulled out the fitting, it wouldn't come off, but you can see the threads all tore. But the evidence is right there. And that's from a, an arc. The only thing I could think of is that um, while I was fitting up this fender and welding on it, I had my ground as close as possible, but it looks like since this fitting was loose, it arced out and melted that little bit. So when I tried to remove the fitting, well, you can see the damage. That's insane. I wasn't thinking then when I purchased this, but I should have bought the one that prints that you can put it over top of wires easily instead of just this one here, which folds it over. You know what else is crazy? This brake line off the Jeep TJ is 1132nd. Obviously, it's not going to reach the back, so I got a connector for that. Call the parts store. None in stock. Amazon had it, though, believe it or not. Three feet for... I don't know, I think it's like 20 bucks. Well, I've never used this style before, so let's make some sense out of her. I'll be looking forward to the day when this project is done, that's for sure. I think this long one is the one I use. to find out 
Okay, that went in there. What about you? This piece goes in there too. Unless I fucked that up. Well, that didn't end well. I just came to the realization that that's operator error on my behalf. That piece should have actually been on this piece, and that green piece should have been in there. I fucked up. It's my fuck up. That's how it should have been. Jesus Christ. I don't even have a spare one now. Let's throw this thing on. Well, that looks a lot better. Not putting a bolt in a hole there. Fuck, too bad I fucked up this one. Jesus. I'm just thinking that where to put this. But right there. It's like it's made to go there. Well, I just got home from my first day at work being on vacation. I must say it's rather depressing. I knew there's gonna be some layoffs. When I went away on vacation, I didn't expect to uh, go to work and find uh, pretty much, fuck, everybody is laid off almost. I think come Monday, there's only gonna be six or seven of us left. Fuck, it's getting grim. I don't know, if I make it to Christmas time, I'll be very surprised. It's like the end of November right now, the time of filming. So we'll see what happens.